Wednesday. Wednesday, the 28th of June. March up really quick to 4th of July. Uh, but today, folks, we're going to start today's show where we left off yesterday, what we talked about yesterday. And uh, before we do that, I want to introduce uh, Eric Thompson to the show. How are you, producer extraordinaire? Doing well. It's going to be really hot here in Oklahoma, 106 today. But, uh, 106 degrees. <laughs> I love it. I'd rather I'd, ra- I'd rather be 106 in Oklahoma than 50 in California. That's all and I that's, can say. Make no mistake. The, the, <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, it's sad to say, but but the state of California is in some deep trouble. But we're going to be here to rescue it. We have to take it back, folks. Uh, but yesterday we were talking about energy technology. We're talking about the wo- World War Three, right? And we're talking about uh, you need strong leaders, you need strong generals, you need strong uh, infantry, you need a great plan, you need a great vision, you need to uh, understand your adversary, you need to understand what your adversary is doing to you. Uh, so if they're doing it to you, you recognize it and you can block it. Uh, you have to make sure that you haven't been infiltrated. You have to make sure that you don't have uh, the enemy in your foxhole. You have to make sure that you don't have the enemy behind you so they can't shoot you in the back. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of things that you need to do to win. Okay, so let's talk about leadership right now. What we want to show, and I dropped this on Eric, uh, the producer extraordinaire. Uh, This is not part of the original format, so I apologize, Eric. But uh, this is a few days ago. I think it's four or five days ago. You're going to see Representative August Pfluger in the state of Texas talking to, let's pull it up here. Who is he talking to, Eric? Who is this this guy? Is he is he a leader in any way? Does he does he have any power? Well, Jeff, uh, he's going to be speaking with Joe Goffman, another one of Biden's disastrous um, nominees and who was nominated, who uh, was passed by the Senate. He is the EPA chief air regulator who okay. sa- said he wanted to help uh, implement o- the Obama's administrative devastating war on coal and reshape okay. the economy. Okay, we're going to play it here. Uh, I believe it's from Instagram. I'm not sure. But the fact is that and I apologize in advance. Sometimes you, it, you can see the words don't match the mouth, but it doesn't matter. Close your eyes unless you're driving uh, and just listen to the words. This is amazing. Go right ahead. Let's play it. Four terawatts annually. Mm-hmm. So the Secretary of Energy didn't know it. The EPA doesn't know it. FERC probably doesn't know it. Who else doesn't know it in this country? And we're mandating electric vehicles. You, what, what's the percentage increase in electricity demand if we get to the 2030 and 2035 <laughs> mandates that your agency is pushing for and the administration is pushing for? What is the percentage increase that we will need? Uh, four-tenths of a percent in 2030 and 4% in 2050. Okay, so the Secretary of Energy sat right there two weeks ago, and she said it's going to double our electricity demand, and you're giving me a much more accurate or at least specific answer. You guys have no idea how much demand is going to be there. Where is that electricity going to come from? Well, first of all, we did analyze the demand that that that, that the implementation of these proposals. EPA analyzed it, or yes, department? we did. We okay. analyzed it as part of our. Where is the electricity going to come from? Analysis uh, it come from uh, a, a diverse grid. It's 110 degrees in my hometown today. The wind is not blowing. The sun is shining, and after four hours of darkness, there will be no batteries on this planet that can produce a reliable source of base load dispatchable power. We have no plan for this. Well, first Doesn't of all, folks. Make you feel good? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's if, yeah. Especially there, there in Oklahoma. Hey, dude, it's hot, it's hot all over there. All over the Southwest and, and all over the South. Heck, all over this country, the heat is rolling. And uh, that, that's because it's summer starting, you know, what, June 21st is uh, what's the first day of summer. So uh, heat is normal in the summertime. But let's, I, I want to take uh, uh, a little offense to what, to what he said when it came to here you are. Uh, we had the Secretary of Energy on, and she said it was a 50% increase if i understood that correctly no, double a double a double i said double the increase of power yeah. and he says it's four tenths and then four percent or something okay first of all that's bs by the way and i don't like how he said well that more he covered his tracks there too he goes i'm more accurate he goes, then he kind of takes away it's not more accurate folks the amount of energy that it's going to take look at the state of california itself 
It already has rolling blackouts, and it arguably has one of the most sophisticated electric grids in the United States, if not the most sophisticated, because it's one of the newest states in the United States. And it's got tremendous amounts of wealth, and they've been planning for electrification for years. But they have rolling blackouts every summer. They're going to start having them again right now. And uh, so what do you do with your electric car and all the other things that are going to be powered by uh, wind, solar, geothermal, uh, wave action? Folks, it's not possible. It's not going to happen. It is absolutely impossible. And and that's a huge part of World War III. And that's why I want to start off the show is that our leaders who are supposed to protect us who swear an oath to uphold the constitution of this country and the sovereignty of this country, and that you, so you have the ability to go out every day in your pursuit of happiness, your pursuit of success, your pursuit of having a safe life and and growing, and then passing that prosperity on to the next generation, and that's the way it's supposed to work. Each generation is supposed to get stronger, it gets smarter, and uh, to have uh, more money, more wealth, uh, more protections. But we're devolving, folks. We are going in the opposite direction because we have been infiltrated We've been infiltrated for a while now. It's really been for decades now. If you didn't see the show yesterday, go watch the show. It's imperative that we understand where we're at and why and who these people are and what they're saying. Because most of you, I suspect, weren't watching, have not seen that, that video, that clip at all. You're busy doing your survival techniques, okay? There's a reason that it's record-breaking numbers of people by the millions are buying uh, basically a portable MREs in a box that you can buy at Costco in Sam's Club and online and then at the Cost Club. One of the biggest sellers we have at the Cost Club, folks, is beef, okay, is beef, jerkies, stuff that's portable, and uh, basically MREs. Okay, you remember MREs from the Marines, don't you? What are MREs for, Eric? Those are meals ready to eat. Those are prepared meals in sealed up packages that last 25 years. Yeah, what are they for? They're easily what, transportable? Oh yeah, you just cut it open, you eat it immediately, get rid of it, done, you can eat. You can, uh, if everything fell apart and there were was nothing on the earth and you had MREs, you could live forever <laughs> well and i gotta tell you because, i have them myself yeah. i've yeah. got a go bag go bags i have portability i have weaponry i have all the things that i believe i would need because it, i don't have a garden so you know there's no garden i don't have a garden i suspect if the stuff hits the fan i'm not going to be able to, to till my garden i need stuff that's portable that i can move on and go to the cost club and check that out because uh, it the oh, the end times are are coming, but we just don't know when they are. And even Jesus told us that, didn't he? Didn't he? Didn't Jesus warn us that we're in the end of times? Yeah, the signs are here, so we definitely need to be prepared. We do. Okay, so that's my little open today. Sorry, Eric. Again, I took you off your uh, well-defined show platform for today, but I thought it was very important for you to understand, folks, that these people, the leaders that you have in place that are supposed to protect you are not doing their job. They're actually selling you out. They don't know what they're doing. They're bridges to nowhere. They're boondoggles. Uh, Eric, pull up the definition of boondoggle. So when I say boondoggle, I want you to know the history of boondoggle and what it means. So it connects. You go, okay, I get it. So what does it say about boondoggle? According to Google's dictionary, a boondoggle, which uh, was originally a Boy Scout term, has morphed into... A noun, which is which means it's work or activity that is wasteful or pointless, but gives the appearance of having value. Or as a verb, it wastes money or time on unnecessary or questionable projects. That's right. Boone doggle. That's what we're in right now. And that's what it means. And that's very, very dangerous when you're at war. You cannot, you do not have the luxury of having boondoggle in your in your repertoire uh, when you're fighting a war. And we are at war, folks. 
no doubt about it. And we're going to prove that many, many ways uh, uh, th- for the show and through the show. And part of that war is attacking, uh, you know, uh, your, your democracy, right? Isn't that what you hear all the time? We're attacking. We must protect the democracy. How many times are you hearing people say democracy, democracy, democracy? It's an ongoing theme. Protect the democracy. Um, Tucker Carlson had a good show. Do you have that pulled up? Tucker Carlson, uh, who I like, by the way, Tucker Carlson. I'm a fan of Tucker Carlson. I think, you know, nobody's perfect and he's trying very, very hard. And I think he's going to uh, uh, be a huge asset through the grace of God for helping us win this war to, to defend the republic the Republic. So I don't know where you can cue this up at, but just let's just play a, a, a you know forty five seconds of this. You'll get the theme of this. But listen to what he says, and uh, it's important to understand why I'm bringing this up, and I'll, I'll explain it to you in a second. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. You may have found yourself wondering recently, as the world slides closer to nuclear annihilation than any time in human history, why exactly are we at war with Russia? It seems like there's a pretty significant downside to this particular foreign policy decision, starting with economic collapse and ending potentially with extinction. So is there a good reason we're doing it? So many innocent young people have been killed. So many hundreds of billions of dollars have been wasted, some of them from the U.S. Treasury. So what's the point? Are we really doing this so the Biden family can repay its debts to the oligarchs who finance their beach house in Rehoboth? Are we doing it so our government can continue to lie about its illicit bio labs in Eastern Europe? So that flabby losers like Toria Newland and Tony Blinken can feel like they're doing something important with their sad, empty lives? Really? Honestly, there's got to be a better reason for waging this the most pointless war of all. What is it? Well, thankfully, we have an answer. The war against Russia, ladies and gentlemen, the war against Putin and for Ukraine is, in fact, a war for democracy. Watch and recall the motive. The president has said many times we're focused on what we can do to support Ukraine's effort uh, to fight for their democracy. Democracy must prevail. The Ukrainian people are fighting the fight for their democracy and in doing so for ours as well. Assisting and helping Ukraine win this fight for democracy and freedom. And of course, Ukrainian President Zelensky understand that what's at stake in Ukraine is bigger than just his nation. It is literally a battle for freedom and democracy themselves. They are showing the world what an existential fight for democracy looks like. President Zelensky and the Ukrainians have changed the course of history for the better. And we unequivocally are with the Ukrainian people in their fight to remain a sovereign democracy. Unequivocally with the Ukrainian people to remain okay, a democracy. Okay, it's okay, a bipartisan okay. we got it. view. We got democracy it. must... We have it. Okay. Tucker, you're doing a great job, but I will uh, have to make a correction. And you got Cornyn, you have Michael McCall. Rhino, Rhino, uh, Rhinos. Uh, it, it's a shame because when I was in Texas politics, when I was the when I was the MC of the Ronald Reagan uh, Awards banquet uh, two years in a row, I don't know, maybe 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. Well, the award was going to Michael McCall, and I'm backstage with Michael McCall. And, uh, you know, he's a a, a likable guy, a nice enough guy. But, you know, a person that wins the Ronald Reagan Conservative Award, only one person gets it every year, okay? And this was in Travis County, Texas, and that is the state capital, and he is an extremely powerful congressman, and he's extremely wealthy. And when they say, when he says democracy, and they all say democracy, that is an absolute break, end game. We have to stop those words because it is, works directly against what our founders gave us. All right? And let's pull up. The difference. You need to know, folks, the difference between a democracy and a republic. Democratic means democracy uh, turns to tyranny. All right. And so you can get a greater breadth of what's going on. I even wrote, uh, I have an article on it on the Craig Bouchon show uh, that we're going to pull up as well. But let's pull this up right now. So, right here, 
Uh, this talks about the key differences between a democracy and the republic. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It would take, the, take too long on the show. But we've got, I'm going to put this out. Let's tweet this out. Uh, let's uh, get it up on, uh, uh, on our toilet. Let's get it up on Spreely. Uh, you know, let's get it out there. You need to know, folks, the difference between a democracy and a republic. So really quick, kind of do the philosophy. Read, Eric, because just something say get an understanding. Uh, here's a democracy. What's the philosophy of a democracy? A democracy is the community of people, which we know as the collective. The community of people are considered to hold power over how they are governed. Kings and tyrants are seen as threats to the innate rights of the people. As such, all eligible citizens get equal say in decisions. That is the term equity on the left. But the republic, republics are in opposition to rulership by a single person. All eligible citizens get equal say in decisions through elected representatives. It, unalienable rights are, of individuals are protected by law to safeguard against a majority abusing the minority. That's right. Let's, let's just stop right there. Folks, the majority abusing the minority, okay? The difference between a democracy and a republic. Democracy leans towards mob rule. Democracy put, get, puts a person with a bullhorn in your capital who's a voted in radical uh, uh, representative that's getting got a bullhorn and trying to intimidate people and putting people up in the rafters, telling people, you know, hey, you got to scream and yell through intimidation. It puts people on the street that burn down for, uh, your community and they rally together and they intimidate and they stand and, and, and they say they're going to hurt you and then they do hurt you and uh you know you, you, it, it gives you places like chad and seattle uh during covid and uh you have un, unequal representation within the government where if you're a business owner in downtown seattle in a democracy if the if the mob doesn't like uh what's going on in policy they go into the streets and they burn your town down and then what happens is that if you own the little donut shop okay or the bookstore, and it's a little mom and pa organization, and you try to go down and protect yourself, they beat the hell out of you. It's caught on video, and nothing happens. And they get to stay there. They burn your store down, and then nobody comes to protect you. The fire department can't go in because of democracy. So democracy, folks, leads to mob rule. Democracy is not about individual rights. Democracy does not give you and I... Uh, Equal protection under the law against not just one another, but really against the mob, the mob rule. OK, so let's move on to uh, let's see. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Go to political system. Just pop down to that. What does it say? It's right there. Uh, yeah, the political system. Uh, dem no, democratic. democratic first. Yes. Yeah. Democratic. D note. This is not meant as a reference to the Democratic Party okay. and Republican. This of is course, not meant as a reference. Have, they have to say that, of course. So you have a Democratic political system or you have a Republican political system. And, and the, the difference is obviously is, is the collective on the Democratic side trying to force equity and then the Republican side, which is supposed to be limited government. That's right. So... It's interesting that they put, and this is a very well thought out, put together uh, 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 post online. It's like an editorial page, really. It's, it's, it really spells it out. Uh, and again, we're going to put it out there so you can see it. The, they, they give a note that this is not meant as a reference, but it does put the Democrat Party under democracy. They didn't put the Republican Party under democracy. And what's dangerous is now you have Republicans saying democracy. Folks, we are not a democracy. And we need government officials who say, okay, time out for a second here. Let's look at the Ukraine war. We have, uh, let's use it, a perfect example of what a representative constitutional republic gives people that you don't agree with 
They have lifestyles that you don't agree with, but it still gives them protections to say things that you may not be comfortable with and live a lifestyle that you may not be comfortable with, okay? It doesn't mean they can go out and indoctrinate other people and try to use it for demonic, uh, uh, to, to weaponize it like we spoke about on the show a few days ago, but it does give them the right to live their life pretty much the way they want. And uh, so right now there's a guy that who uh, has been arrested because he does he's, – he's more pro-Russia apparently. And uh, he was arrested as he's an American. I think he's a dual citizen uh, uh, but also American, born in America. And he is now imprisoned in uh, the Ukraine. So let's talk about that. Why is he imprisoned? What happened? Well, he's a dual citizen of the U.S. and Chile, okay. and he's but he's living in uh, the city, Ukrainian city of however you say it, Kharkiv. Uh, but he's basically a, a pro-Russia blogger. Okay, so, so he's that, a pro-Russia blogger. Doesn't believe that the war in Ukraine uh, is what uh, apparently what it's being led to believe people to believe. And uh, I don't know why he's pro-Russia. I didn't dig into it, but you know, the United States of America. In a republic, you can be pro-Russia uh, and give your reason why, and people can disagree with you, but they're not going to throw you in prison, at least yet. You have the ability to push back against your leadership. There was people in Vietnam. Look, look at Vietnam War. Look at the amount of people who were not arrested, uh, who are now the ones that are wanting to arrest people like uh, this person. Uh uh, what happened in, in, in Vietnam? Look at the violence. Look at the weather underground. Look at all the stuff that happened because they didn't agree with uh, what was going on in the Vietnam War. All right? So there you saw a weaponization, the misrepresentation of, of your republic. They, they went in and they became vicious and violent and blew up government buildings they blew they, they they hurt people they killed people that's what democracies do okay and so here's this guy who doesn't believe in the war uh, uh, you know he believes that one side is is uh uh i mean look at jane fonda in vietnam right she wasn't like exactly pro america if you know what i mean pro soldier uh so but uh, she uh is did not sit in prison for months and months and months and months and face years of imprisonment because she lives in a republic. But these people, as you can see, will weaponize whatever situation they need uh, to, to get their point across and suppress uh, people like this gentleman. So now w w look at his background. W what's he do for a living? What's this guy? Who is this guy? Well, he, he's a, from what I can understand, he's just basically a, a, a a guy involved in the media that um, is he he pushes out uh, some pretty um, he gets kind of into the fringe stuff and the sexuality and the relationship. So that kind of discredits him to some people. But the the guy's problem is he's always, he's he's pro Russia. And then Zelensky, who supposedly is trying to advance democracy. That's right. Had him a, democracy. He, who, according to what Tucker reported in that article, he and he he played a video of Zelensky actually saying it himself. He has uh, canceled all elections in Ukraine. That's right. He, he had put he had this guy arrested in his home. He's looking at five to eight years in prison as an American yes. citizen for what they're calling advancing wartime propaganda. And Biden is not intervening to help this American citizen who has constitutional rights in America to get out of the prison system in. Ukraine. Right. I would love to have this guy brought to the United States of America, listen to everything he has to say, going through a, a, a uh, through the court system, uh, because the reality is, you know, he, he, democracy, folks, is not your friend. It's just that simple. Yeah, this guy, don't know him at all. Uh, he's obviously got very sketchy background, like many Americans do, but they don't come knock on your door or arrest you because you're you have a sketchy lifestyle. If they well, did, there'd be tens of millions of more people in prisons in the United States of America. And uh, that's I'm not saying that's where they want to go. I'm just saying right now in the representative republic, uh, 
As Benjamin Franklin said, we have given you a republic if you can keep it. Uh, this is what happens. Democracy is not your friend. So Tucker Carlson is do, showing the right things on his show, but is saying the wrong words. He needs, I'd love to hear him say, folks, we say democracy. We have a democratic means. We vote collectively to vote in people, but we're a representative republic. And uh, so it, it's just that simple. So what else we got going on on that subject line? Well, there, there's another issue, uh, and, and, and Tucker, I think, nailed it, saying, are, are these are reasons why this is happening? Um, this guy um, also is in hot water with Zelensky because he debunked the conspiracy. He's basically saying that Russia – uh, was right that America had set up bio wep bioweapons labs in Ukraine. So he was debunking the conspiracy that, that, that Ukraine and America was pushing that we didn't do that. He said, no, um, Russia didn't do it. America set up the labs in Ukraine. And so th that puts him at odds against Biden and the administration. So not only is his own country leadership turning on him, now he's been thrown to the dogs of Ukraine and the democracy and the mob rule is like, oh, then you're bad. So we we don't care about you as a human and you need to be put away. Right. Because, look, there's a reason, folks, that you're innocent till proven guilty. Fact. Because many, many years ago, governments would throw you in the gulag. They would throw up. They'll still do it today in Russia <laughs> and apparently in Ukraine. Uh, you, you're innocent to proving guilty, and then you're supposed to have uh, you'd be, be able to get out on bail unless there's something very egregious that you've done that you can't. But the, whole, the due process side of all of this is that you have the ability to be a free person. OK, and that the government has to prove and there's a lot of protections for you in a republic, folks. The government just can't show up and say, let me in. I'm going to check what you have inside your mattress. They can't do it. They need a warrant because of your protections that you have in a republic. A democracy, the mob will just kick your door in and take all your stuff while they're uh, uh, setting you up. OK, planting the things that they said that you that they're looking for in your couch or in your cushions, in your bed, in your mattress, they, they, they'll plant it. OK, and then arrest you. That's what the democracy can give you. Venezuela. Uh, what happened to Venezuela? That's what democracy gives you. What happened in, uh, in with Hitler? You know, that's what democracy gives you. This mob rule. OK, there's a if you go to Craig Bouchon show dot com uh, a while ago, I put together an article that I wrote America and its constitutional republic. OK, and the reason I did that uh, is that I could see this trend happening where there's a misinformation and disinformation. Uh, and, and there's a difference in that. A misinformation is mistakenly saying something like if I just was talking about I said, hey, folks, in the democracy today and I just kept talking and I just. Uh, be, I, I mistakenly said democracy, and then I would go back and correct and say, folks, we're not tr truly a democracy, and I would I'd say what we really are. That's a misinformation. Disinformation is dishonest. Dishonesty is prevalent everywhere, okay? And so when I wrote this article and I looked at it for information that could try to – I really want to break things down so I can understand them at a sixth grade level, okay? Uh, because – I want to be able to understand. I mean, I mean, reading the children's Bible is sometimes easier than trying to interpret the this and they and though and all that kind of stuff that's in there. Uh, no doubt about it. So in a sense, dumbing myself down, dumbing the things down so I can understand it myself, right? So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with uh, a, a misrepresentation of what the United States of America is and who we're going to help like a Ukraine, what they what we want them to become. We're leading people to believe that we want them to become like us. And when we do that and we see what he's doing and we're supporting him, he's arresting his opposition, you would definitely see that in Russia. You would definitely see Putin do that, 100%. Uh, and... No due process. These people are just going to sit there. And, 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 what did, and, and what does Zelensky say? 
And I don't think we have that pulled up right now, but maybe we can in the future. But where he specifically says, look, we're not going to have uh, any voting right now, folks. Not why the war's going on. Look, there's a war we're dealing with. Look, there's no liberty during wartime. Yes, we are doing this for liberty. Oh, no, for democracy. But in the democracy, I'm the king. So I cannot be removed from office till the war's over. So how long is this war going to last, folks? Well, if I go by other uh, kind of fights that's went on in that area, in that part of the world, and in, and in uh, uh, the Middle East, I don't know, we're in Afghanistan for, what, 20-plus years? How long does this cat need to be or get to be in power because of the war? Well, it's going to be as long as he says there's a war, right? Because it's about a fight for democracy, folks. What's next? We go to war in the United States of America because we're, they're all saying, Michael McCall, uh, all the people, Republicans, Democrats are not saying democracy. Is that the next thing? Well, you know, the president, we can't have elections, folks. I apologize. It's too radical of a time. You could see that people we don't believe right now in the electoral system and we have, the, uh, 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 we, we have issues and we're at war. So we're just going to suspend uh, elections for 2024. Could you imagine that? Well, part of you are going, damn right, Greg, I can imagine that. It's, I, I think it could happen. And there are millions and millions and millions of you that believe that something's going to happen before 2024. You believe that, that the, 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 I don't know, the trial, uh, the shot across the bow, the practice was COVID. COVID brought us Biden. COVID brought us a suspension of your constitutional rights from your local mayors all the way to even the president of the United States allowing somebody like Fauci to be the quasi czar dictator of your liberty. And now you've got the WHO, the World Health Organization, that's teamed up with 80 countries out of the 194, 195 countries that are out there that are giving the power to the WHO to talk to you about what you can and cannot do traveling around the world. So coming to the U.S. or leaving the U.S. So, folks, that has nothing to do. That, 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 that totally uh, uh, supersedes any power that the government can give to a foreign nation or foreign power. Your constitutional rights trump anything that the WHO says. Fact. But not if your leaders don't allow you to understand what your constitutional rights are. You and I are be, have been oppressed for decades. It's a drip, 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 a death of a thousand cuts. And we are feeling the pain now of that war that we have been in, World War III, for quite some time. And here's, here's Zelensky himself. If you want to hear what the American government is saying is democracy being advanced in Ukraine. So here is uh, Tucker's part about uh, Zelensky. Okay, perfect. Ukrainian democracy, in other words, we can have no democracy here. If the Ukrainians aren't free, neither are we. We must make sure they can vote in Kiev so we can continue to vote in Kansas City. It's really that simple. And yet tonight, we regret to tell you that we have a problem. It looks like they're not going to be able to vote in Kiev anymore. And no, for once, it's not Putin's fault. Democracy in Ukraine seems to be suspended by the world's foremost democracy advocate himself, Field Marshal Zelensky. Watch this. So when you have an election, well, he says if we win, we'll let people vote. Otherwise, no. You vote when we feel like it, because ultimately we're completely in charge and make all the rules. Your job is to obey or be punished. That's our version of self-government. That's right. Self That's means right. me. I'm the government. 
Now, that's not just any autocrat. That's our chief ally in the war for democracy. This is the guy who just announced he's likely to cancel next year's elections. So you've got to wonder what the Biden administration thinks of this. We can't possibly continue to support Zelensky, that guy, after he said that, can we? Because in a clip less than 30 seconds long, he just blew up our entire rationale for supporting his side in the war. So we can't support him. Oh, of course we can. Yeah. And we will. Here's Joe Biden from yesterday reaffirming America's unequivocal support for Ukraine. No matter what happened in Russia, we, the United States, would continue to support Ukraine's defense and its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. So to recap, we are currently fighting a war for democracy on behalf of a leader who just casually announced he's happy to end democracy. Okay, okay. All right. Democracy. All right. So, again, now that you've heard me talk about democracy versus republic... Now you can see how important it is that Tucker Carlson explains to you, like we are in this show, about the difference. Because, yes, they want a democracy there. They don't want a representative republic there. They, we want leaders in place that we can control to control their society. Because, quite frankly, democracies are radical. Democracy gives you the power to make decisions. It doesn't give the all-seeing eye power. It doesn't give, you know, remember, we've talked about this before. You know, think about it this way. Here, here is uh, uh, democracy. Here is even the Federalist Papers. Here is what these leaders want. They want to be at the top of the triangle. Here they are with the power. We're here at the bottom, okay? Uh, so... Uh, it's a pyramid, right? And you've heard about the pyramid scheme, okay? The there's a lot of schemes in the pyramid that, uh, well, there's nothing wrong with the pyramid. Every corporation is a pyramid. You got a president at the top, and then you got all of the managers, the people, then the employees are at the bottom. So there's unions that do what unions try to twist that where where it's more equal, right? There, there's a there's a push pull happening all constantly. This teeter trotting back and forth about the rights of the the minion, the employee against big business, and then the rights of the business, right? Well, these governments Governments want this, okay? They want that. Our republic did this. It turned it upside down. It put the power with the people, with you and I. You control the government. As a matter of fact, it's so powerful, there's a filter that actually what doesn't constitutionally go, powers given to the government it goes to the states. And then when the states constitutionally don't have the power through the 10th Amendment, uh, then it goes to who? Back to the people. The people, we are, this is a society. Now they're trying to do this. I need to have a whiteboard. I need to have, I need to have a digital. I can't wait till the new studio is done. Because the reality is that this is, this is, where, this is where they want to be. Power at the top. This is where we are today, and, and there it's a fight. They want it here. We want it here. That is a representative republic. Does that make sense, Eric? Does, did, did I explain it well enough right there that we can really get a grasp on the difference? Definitely. It's, it's, uh, our founders wanted each person to be represented through their representative, and then they could hold them accountable and, and keep constraints on the federal government but instead now we've allowed we've allowed through some bad court decisions and some lethargic republican voters to that inversion to take place and now we're going you can't suppress my speech you can't put that pastor in jail for preaching against abortion you can't take my taxes like that and the, well, look what we Amazon to... just did. Folks, you want to see the power of a democracy where a limited number of people control the power, okay? Here's Amazon at the top, right? If I remember the story right, didn't Amazon lock a dude out of his house because they thought that he treated somebody rude? Did I understand that correctly? It was one of those listening devices in his house, and um, and, and somebody came to the door, one of the, his, his, their employees, and supposedly he said something racial, but he actually didn't, and it was recorded. But yeah, because he because a a a person of color de package delivery person said that they there was a racial slur or a connotation of talking down to him, it caused this whole backlash, and the corporation shut down that customer. Their most 
desirable person, a customer, they shut them off until they realized that the, the employee was lying. That's right. So they, they think about the, that. the mob rule. They got emotional. Right. Okay, we're going to go outside of our business model. We're going to not even give the guy his due process, and we're going to take away his privileges as one of our customers. And then, oops, we should have checked. <laughs> this is what happens, folks, when you have companies that have too much power because they circumvent your Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, right? They circumvent your ability to be protected from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. By the government. Doesn't say by a company. Think about that for a minute, folks. You know, Sun Tzu's Art of War, if you haven't read it, you need to read it. Because part of the message in that is hit people where they're vulnerable, hit them where they're weak, and where they're strong, you look weak while you're flanking them, right? That's kind of a gist of part of, of it, to kind of break it down at my sixth grade mentality. Uh, so protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. So what happens? Because the government's here, okay? Remember that, all right? The government is down here. You are here. But in this case, with Amazon and the democracy... Amazon is here, and this dude's down here. There is no protection. Only thing that you have is they believe something happened. There's no due process. You can't get in your home. What? Yes, that's what happens, folks, when things are getting out of control. Out of control. These big corporations are listening to you all the time. Where does that fall under your Fourth Amendment to the Constitution when it's weaponized against you? So what's happened, there's now a victim. And I don't know all the story about this, but on the surface, this is the perfect time for a lawsuit. Uh, this is the perfect time to go after a company that is abusing their power and, and did not allow a person, right or wrong, you're innocent until proven guilty but not in the court of public opinion, especially in big corporations. You are guilty until we decide to turn your lights on. So as you give permissions, folks, as you allow smart devices into your life and you just said, oh, man, I got I to gotta get on my phone here. Oh, I got to have an update. Oh, gosh. Got to have a Wi-Fi. Okay, got to get on Wi-Fi. And I, and I go in and I touch my phone and I update. Okay, update. Make sure your battery's full. Okay, at least 20% because this is going to take a while. And it goes on and they download it. Are you reading out of any of it? You're not reading any of it. You're not reading any of it. Any of it. And what's in the minutia of that? It's things like, hey, we can shut your power off. What? Yeah, you said something. We're going to, you can't get in your house. What? Yeah. You signed that, didn't you know? No. Well, ignorance of the law, folks, is no excuse. So you, you, another case of point that draws the connection of how you got to change things. Let's look at Big Pharma. Big Pharma, after many, many years of pressure and, and a lot of deaths from taking pharmaceutical drugs uh, that are actually not good for you, but they were able to navigate through the FDA, they would have all these promises on the commercial, and they'd have very little about the negatives. But then you notice now they, they started having to say the, uh, the negatives because of people pushing, okay? The representative republic was pushing against the big pharma system, and all of a sudden they'd say it, but they say it a thousand miles an hour. It'd be a bop, 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 bop. You're like, what did, that, what did they say? What did they say? Well, it's good. We put it out there. The information's there. Now, you can't really hear it, but we, we follow the rule of the law. And then what happened? Well, that didn't work. Push again. Legislators pushing, passing legislation, passing laws saying, Big Pharma, you have to give people information so they can absorb it. So then what do you start hearing? Side effects. Death. Huh? Yeah, you can take this thing. You got a rash on your skin? Yeah, the rash on your skin can go away, but you might get liver failure and you might want to commit suicide. I think I'll live with the rash. Thank you. Please ask your doctor because we are. We're talking to your doctor every day. Every day we're talking to your doctor who has the power, right? 
Think about these things, folks. I hope I'm not losing you because the fact is, folks, it's a death of a thousand cuts. Look at COVID. What happened in COVID? You'd call your doctor. Hey, doctor, uh, I want to get some ivermectin. No, you can't have it. No, I want it. Um, it, it works. I want to have it. You can't have it. Well, what do you mean I can't have it? God forbid you went to the hospital, that you went to the hospital with all the power. You're the minion. All the As soon as you checked in, it was like Hotel of California. You ain't checking out. Many, many people died because of bad prescribed medicine from the power at the top. You, Minion, tried to get to the top to say, I want to check my, uh, I know somebody personally, folks. And this all has to do with your republic and your freedoms, because that's what all this is about. I have a friend of mine that his, I would talk to him through the entire process, and I will tell you he had nothing to do with money because he's a very, very, very wealthy person. And his sister got COVID in the heat of COVID, and she checked into a hospital, and she checked in not on a respirator, not needing a respirator, but the things that the doctor was giving said, uh, uh, your, your sister's not getting better. And he's like, well, what are you doing? Well, we're doing this, 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 and this. All the things that you heard about that you're like, they aren't working, and people are going on respirators, going on respirators at the all-powerful hospital uh, and he called the doc. He called the doctor and said, "Give her this drug. Uh, you know, ivermectin is one of them, and the other things that I want to try that because this isn't working. No, we don't prescribe that. Well, what you're doing is kill- she's dying. She's she's now if she goes on a respirator, d- d- the odds of her surviving is nothing." I want to get her on. Well, you're going to have to find a doctor outside of the power. Uh, And so he did because he had tremendous wealth. And he got that doctor to say, I will uh, prescribe the medicine. Nope, you can't do it. You got to check her out of the hospital. What? And to do that, you got to have a a private, uh, where where is she going? And you have to have a private uh, ambulance. And you're going to have to, because you can't use ours, not our contracts. Well, folks, she died. He couldn't get through the power, the power of that democracy. And she died. As he was seeing people winning everywhere, taking the cocktail that he wanted to try. He wanted to try. I want to try, because what you're doing isn't working. You have no liberty. You have no liberty in this hospital. So why? Well, come to find out, doctors all around this country, when they take that Hippocratic oath, which is really hypocritical oath, we learned through COVID by way too many of them, they would say, If I prescribe what you want, A, I'll get fired. Because I actually am not an independent doctor. I work for the power. I work here. All right? So I have no ability to do it. I have a contract. And if I did prescribe it, the pharmacist won't fill it. The pharmacist working for the power, won't fill it. Where is my freedom in myself? Why can't I, or why could not he take her out? Because they didn't allow it. The power of democracy, folks, is very, very dangerous. The misrepresentation of what this country is is the death sentence of you and I and the future generations, your children. Your children are being dumbed down on purpose so they have no idea what this is versus this is. Fact. 
And the government is using corporations to go after you because they technically, in their mind, don't fall under the constitutional protections. They're private companies. Can't do nothing about it. They're private. No. These companies have been weaponized against you. How do I know that? Because you watched it. You see it. And that's connected right to Ukraine. It's connected right to what's going on uh, uh, with, with uh, we're not going to have, probably can't have elections, folks. You know, I'm sorry, but uh, the democracy has to win. Demo Look, folks, it's about your freedom and democracy for you. So if you think I'm not running the war well, there's really, not until the war's over, can you actually vote to get me out? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I took an oath three times in my life to uphold the constitution of this country against foreign and domestic. Eric, my Marine buddy, did you take an oath? I did, and uh, and that's why I've got pulled up here this this uh, little workaround that the uh, democracy is doing, public-private partnerships. Well, where they, they get in bed together, then they can supersede the constitution by using the corporation to ah, violate the laws. Yes. 100%. So uh, our founders knew this day would come. Our founders knew that uh, through a myriad of re for a myriad of reasons, you and I and tens and hundreds of millions of people just are going to get inundated and can be hoodwinked and lied to and deceived and uh, d w different powers can be overtaken and mob rule can happen. And that's why you have an electoral college. So what are the Democrats wanting to get rid of? Do you can you pull up something that proves that, uh, you know, you've heard it, folks, but I know there's stuff out there that where they want to get rid of the electoral college. Why do they want to get rid of the electoral college? If they can get rid of the electoral college before 2024, if they could do that, if Biden can just take his pen, no more electoral college. It's for the it's for the democracy. It's it's for the people. The people need to rule, folks. It's about you. It's about the people. It's about the mobs, folks. It's about the the mobs. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, go ahead and uh, can you are you ready to show that or read it or what? Yeah, what it's, have? This, it's from the okay. Congress Congress.gov. The uh, the end of the Electoral College was introduced in the House on January 11th, 2021. Mm -hmm. They proposed an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to abolish the Electoral College and to provide for the direct bracket, Democratic unbracket election of the President and Vice President of the United States. Right. So they want to end it. They want right. to end the and Electoral who College. Did that? The that Democrats. would be the Democrat Party. Hmm. Under Pelosi, they had the majority. Hmm. Why? Because it's about the democracy, folks. The democracy must survive. The dem it's about, what is all this stuff about, about? No, no, no. The democracy, folks. Not that. That. And that's why we have that. That's why we have American coming, folks. And we need your help. Ladies and gentlemen, when I say the republic is at stake, I'm not just saying it because I want to get ratings, because I suspect I'm going to get very low ratings. I suspect that I'm going to be shadow banned. I'm going to be blocked. I'm going to be I'm going to have everything thrown about on social media that you can't see this message. Fact. That's why you have to go to Spreely. We're on Spreely. Just go to Spreely. There's American right there. Love it. You got to check it out, folks. We got the oath. We've, we've talked about it on the show. We're going to talk about it on every show because that is the place where we unite. That is the place where voters, we're going to learn to show up and we're going to be vetting these candidates that are selling us out. Here is the social media. Uh, that's really there we have it. You sign in and then you go to Spreely. And Spreely, folks, is a place where liberty lives. Okay? Truth also is out there. Twitter, you can see, finally, they're seeing a glimmer of hope. But there's not a lot out there. You've got a lot of individual uh, people having sites that you go to. But where's the movement? How do I get? I love Epic Times. I do. I think they're doing a great job. But 
Epic Times needs to team up with American. They need to team up here, and we all need to sign the oath, and we all need to get out there, and we got to start showing up at all the capitals around this country, at all the school board meetings, at all of the sheriff's races, all of the constable races. We have to show up everywhere all the time. Van Jones said it. Let's take a little bit of the Van Jones uh, playbook. You know the old greens are from the... Uh, Obama administration, top down, bottom up, inside out, folks. Top down, bottom up, inside out. What it means is you have to go in from all directions. You have to overwhelm your adversary, Song Su's Art of War. You need to get in and infiltrate. We have to cut these people off from their food source. Their food source, the enemy's food source, is social media. It feeds their narrative through social media. So what do you do? We have to have alternative means to communicate. That's Spreely. That's Twellet. That's the Craig Bouchon show. And others. But we have to have a place to go. And how do we unite? And the way we unite is under American. That's what we do. We sign the oath. We sign the oath. And we put it on the wall to prove that we're in the game. To prove that this is unacceptable, ladies and gentlemen. This is unacceptable. <laughs> You're going to know anytime you see this. Hmm. Uh, that is what we want, right? That's what our founders gave us. We have given you a republic if you can keep it. Now, real quick for the folks, how much time we got left? We got about three and a half, three minutes left. Please do me a favor, Eric. Start with the, I want to start with the citizen oath. Please read out the entire uh, citizen oath. Okay, so the folks who aren't watching the show right now are just listening to it, what it says. I solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of a citizen of the United States of America. If the candidate I vote into office is found to have broken their oath, I will work to remove them from office by impeachment or repeal, so help me God. That's right. It's about accountability, folks. It's about responsibility, and it's about staying in the game and focusing on those who say that they're here to protect the republic, okay? Now, uh, when that happens, you know, you should uh, have a bumper sticker, you should uh, wear the T-shirt, you should wear a hat, or don't wear any of it all. Just put the plaque on the wall. You don't have to do that. Screenshot your signature that you did and, and print it out and just uh, carry it with you. Or Just know that that's your responsibility. And the lapel pin, and it's not just going to be the lapel pin, folks. It's also could be a brooch. It could be whatever. The, but the this connection to uh, the candidate oath, you're going to notice, pull up the candidate oath, please, Eric. Uh, the candidate oath... The entire beginning is the same, except for the very end about accountability. Just do the very end there, Eric. And, uh, you know, we're holding ourselves accountable to watch them. And then what, what does a candidate oath say? And which is also, folks, for existing politicians as well. So go well, ahead. Well, yeah, it, toward the end, it says, I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of office of which I'm about to enter. If I am found to have broken this oath, I expect to be removed from office by my electorate. So help me God. That's right. American, folks, gives you pop, position of power. It unites us for a purpose. That purpose is fixing the union. And in the union, it's really about elect it's who's in office. It's a representative republic. Those people represent us. And we're not filtering them right. We're not holding them accountable right. And they don't fear you and me like they should. They should be working in our best interest. 
And it's going to rein in, folks, this overreaching government. It's going to allow you to unite. It's going to allow you to change things like the 14th Amendment to the Constitution that has been weaponized against our sovereignty. The only way that's going to change is by people getting together on a front that's unbreakable. Because the word American, American, that is what we are. We're Americans. And American, the I, is you and I, folks. The Liberty Torch is you and I. And that flame cannot be allowed to go out. And boy, are they spraying the water on us. Okay? And the big C is capitalized and bold can. I can. We can make a difference, folks. But only together can we do it. We can, one vote is not enough, but it's everything when it's united with other votes. And we collectively push against this oppression because make no mistake, folks, democracy is what they want. And democracy is not what they're going to get. Not in the United States of America. Because, folks, Benjamin Franklin said it best We have given you a republic if you can keep it, folks. And we're going to keep it. And real quick, tomorrow, I want to focus in on Haiti. We're going to focus in on where is all this energy production kind of come from when we move to all electric? And where's the cobalt come from? And where does all this, what's it doing to the earth? Boy, we got a lot to discuss. Save the republic, folks. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.